Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Signal Gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with Signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood Signal Dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Death Pays a Visit. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. The Crowleys are a typical young married couple, the kind of people you have living on your block. A little more prosperous than most, perhaps. Drive a better car, nicer clothes, you know. Funny, too, because Jake Crowley only earns $47.50 a week as assistant manager of a branch of Sellers National Bank. And the neighbors might be surprised to learn that the Crowleys have only $321.17 in their joint bank account. That's not much. A pittance, it seems, to Trina Crowley. Especially when Jake tells her about how they came to have it. Well, that's all that's left, Trina. How much was it to begin with, Jake? Almost ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars? Where's it gone? Where do you think? You wanted a new car, didn't you? You insisted on that trip to Tahoe last summer. You asked for this house, didn't you? Oh, so I was the one at fault. I spent the money. I suppose the next thing you'll be saying is that I instigated the whole thing. Listen, affair. Trina, we won't get anywhere this way. We've got to figure a way out. I need your help. Well, Jake, I don't know anything about finance. If only you told me before, perhaps if, you if, could have... If, if, Post-mortems aren't going to do any good. The thing's done. Can't you get that through your head? Yes, I can get it through my head. And I won't be talked to that way. All right, all right, Trina. I'm sorry. I'm on edge. I'm sorry. When are the bank examiners due? Next Tuesday after the weekend. But can't you cover up some way? Isn't there something you can do? Nothing. Since that new manager's been in, I haven't had a chance to lay my hands on the accounts. Jake, I don't know what to say. It's... it's... The word is grand larceny, Trina. And that's how it began. Jake had stolen $10,000 from the bank, and they had to do what they did. They were desperate. There didn't seem to be any way out. No way at all. Then, as though fate itself had planned it, the letter came. I don't like your precious cousin, Charlie. I wish he'd stay home where he belongs. It's only for the weekend, Jake. He says in his letter he'd enjoy spending our wedding anniversary. Well, I'm not going to enjoy having him. Those stupid jokes he tells. I can hardly wait to hear that cheery laugh of his. (laughs) And so the fellow says, is this the general store? And the other guy says, yes. And so he says, okay, let me speak to the general. (laughs) <laughs> Do you like that? Not particularly. <laughs> well, then there's the one about the two bookies who went to heaven. Have I told that to you? Is it funny? It sure is. And you haven't told it. And I haven't... <laughs> oh, say, that's good. That's real good. Thanks. Yeah. Cousin Charlie. Yeah? I've laid out some towels for you if you want to freshen up. And your room's ready whenever you are. Oh, thanks. Well, I guess I'll go upstairs, then. 
Hey, where's that little traveling kit of mine? Oh, it's there with your suitcase at the head of the stairs. Huh? Yeah, so it is. Getting so I can't see a thing without my glasses. <laughs> I think I'll take my suitcase up, too. I want to look at it. Oh, oh I, I dropped the kit. Oh, here, I'll get it, Cousin Charlie. You seem to have... You seem to have a lot of money here, Charlie. Oh, the kit came open, didn't it? It's in cash. Yes, I just sold a piece of property of mine in Missouri on the way out here. Funny old codger brought it. Yes, he insisted on doing business in cash. Quite a lot of cash, by the way, the looks of it. Mm-hmm, $10,000. It's an awful lot of money to carry around. Well, I haven't had a chance to deposit it yet. You know, the funny part of it is I've been trying to get rid of that property for years and no one would touch it. And then suddenly this guy offers me $10,000. <laughs> Just like a present, is it? Yes. Yes. Well, I guess I'll go on up I... Oh. Oh, happy anniversary. Oh, maybe I'm a little too early for that, huh? <laughs> well, anyway, happy anniversary. You know, Jake, I've been thinking, as long as Charlie has a guest $10, room... $10,000. Did you see it? $10,000, Trina. It would more than make up what I'm short at the bank. I know, but I don't... 10000 Jake. Good Lord, Jake, you... Charlie's got $10,000. <laughs> Whistler fans, many of you have been asking whether the Whistler will follow the example of numerous popular programs in going off the air for the summer. Well, I'm happy to be able to tell you tonight that in appreciation of your loyalty that has made the Whistler the most popular of all West Coast radio shows, Signal Oil Company and the hundreds of neighborhood Signal gasoline dealers who sponsor the Whistler will continue to broadcast this program without interruption throughout the summer. So for your Monday night radio entertainment, we of the cast hope you'll continue to make the Whistler a regular stop on your dial. And during the week, we hope you'll stop at the friendly stations displaying Signal's yellow and black circle sign and get acquainted with the gasoline whose famous longer mileage formula helps each gas stamp go farther. Signal Go Farther Gasoline. Yes, there never was a better time to join the ever-increasing thousands of wise Western drivers who are discovering it's a fact. You do go farther with Signal Gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. When Jake Crowley found out that Cousin Charlie had $10,000 in cash with him, his eyes went cold and hard. You'd never seen him look like that before, had you, Trina? He stared intently as though he were seeing something that no one else could see. For a moment you thought it was all in your mind, that you imagined what Jake was thinking. But then you couldn't help but know Jake had planned. Would you rather see me go to prison? Oh, it might be better, Jake. Better than this. You don't mean that, Trina. Oh, Jake, I don't know what I mean. I, I, I'm so confused. There's nothing I... to be confused about. We can't afford to be. I thought the whole thing out last night. I think I know how it can be done. What do you intend to do? Do you remember Charlie saying he couldn't see very well without his glasses? He's always been near sight. All right. One of us has to get our hands on those glasses. We break them. Make it appear accidental, of course. And then? I've typed this note. Here, look it over. We'll find some way to get him to sign it. He won't know what he's signing if he can't read it. Looks all right. Are you sure this will leave us in the clear, Jake? You can't miss, Trina. All we have to do is get Charlie to sign it. What are you going to use for the... Potassium cyanide. The encyclopedia says five grains are fatal. I can buy it at a photography studio in town. They use it for gilding pictures. That way I won't have to sign for it. Oh, Jake, I'm frightened. No, you aren't. You aren't, Trina. You understand? When people get frightened, they get caught. Remember that. But if Charlie should suspect anything, if Charlie should... If Charlie should what? Charlie! <laughs> Morning. My ears are burning. What were you saying about me? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, yes, you were. I heard you. Heard what? Well, I heard you mention my name. Oh, come on. What's the secret? Oh, well, I was just telling Jake if... Uh... If you didn't like hotcakes for breakfast, I didn't know what I could fix. Hotcakes? Well, hotcakes are my favorite dish, yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. Before you two sit down, this uh, this water faucet's stuck. Hmm? But why don't you see if you can turn it for me, please? Why, sure thing. Let me. I'm a regular handyman, that's me. 
Now, which one is it? It's the hot water faucet. Cold water works all right, but... Hmm? Well, <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem to be anything the matter with... No, it's this one over here. Hey, look out for that cold water. Oh, dear, I've splattered your suit, haven't I? I'm so sorry. Here, take this dish cloth. Oh, thank you. Here, let me have your glasses. I'll dry them Oh, that's for you. all right. I can do no, it. No, let me do it. I can do it. <laughs> okay, here. I don't know how I ever could have done it. <laughs> look out for the glasses. Oh, oh yeah. now look what I've gone and done. I've broken your glasses. Yeah, it was my only pair. I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm terribly sorry. Well, you've taken the first big step, Trina, and you're hoping you won't be sorry for it. Jake goes on to work, and you and Cousin Charlie lounge around the house. That afternoon, you're out on the sun porch trying to read, but you can't concentrate. All you can think of is how to get Charlie to sign that note. Then, as if in answer to the question, an article in the magazine caught your eye. There was a solution as simple as that. What was it Jake said? People who get frightened get caught? Yes, be calm, Trina, and casual. Cousin Charlie? Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting article. You seen this? What? Uh, it's about the different specimens of handwriting. It says that your entire character can be determined just by the way you sign your name. No? Yeah. It says if you circle your eyes instead of dotting them, you're an extrovert. And if you don't cross your T's, you're an introvert. <laughs> what are you, Charlie? An extrovert or an introvert? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I don't go in for that handwriting stuff. It's a whole lot of bunk. Oh, maybe it's not. <laughs> they have a chart here that explains the whole thing. Charlie? Mm-hmm. Charlie, write your name and let me see if I can analyze your handwriting. Oh, no, Trina. As I, I think I'd like to take a walk. No, no, it'll take just a Oh, some second. other time, oh, huh? Please, Charlie, now don't... Well, no, I... I... Here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, now, use my pen. Hmm? Go on, now. Write your name on this piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah. Now, are you satisfied? Yes. Yes, I'm satisfied. So far, so good, Trina. All you have to do now is wait until Jake returns. Then the next step. Jake's late getting home that night. Charlie and you have finished supper and he'd gone into the living room. You were straightening up in the kitchen when you heard the car turning in the driveway. Jake came in the back door. Jake! Jake, you're late. Where have you been? The stores were jammed. I had to wait a long time at the photography studio. And I got it. Did you get everything you're supposed to? Yes. Here. Trina, you're wonderful. I was afraid for a while I wouldn't Here be able Charlie. to... Here comes Charlie. Trina, I... Uh... Oh... Jake uh, finally got home, eh? Yes, Charlie. Well, I, uh, I just come in to say good night. Oh, you going to bed so early? Mm hmm. Gotta get my beauty wings. Well, good night. Oh, Cousin Charlie. Yeah? We. We were just getting ready to fix some tea, weren't we, Trina? Hmm? Oh, yes, 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 we were. Why don't you join us in a cup before you turn in? Well, no, thanks. I don't think so. Good night. Good night. The idea of the tea. This is it. You mean. No. Yes, this is perfect, can't you see? I'll put the water on. Jake, let me see that note again. What's the matter with you? You've seen it. But we might have left something out. There might be some kind of I a mistake. I tell you, it's all right. Oh, it'll make you feel any better here. Dear Trina and Jake, I trust that you will forgive me for what I've done. If one loses his desire to live, this is the only way. You find $10,000 in my traveling kit, I want you to have it. Call up my anniversary present to the both of you. I have no explanation to offer other than the fact that I've grown weary and perhaps a little old. I've lived my life now and I wish to take it by my own hand. Please try to understand. Love from your cousin, Charlie Martin. Is there anything wrong with that? No, no, I guess not. Put this in his cup. There's ten grains here. All right. 
Wait, wait a minute, Jake. What's the matter now? The police will ask where he got the poison. Trina, Trina, don't you think I've thought of that? Charlie must have found it in the desk. I used it last summer for developing pictures. Oh. Now, will you please get a hold of yourself? Take the tea upstairs. Oh, Jake, I'm afraid I'm going to be sick. You're not anything of the kind. You're all right. It's all planned perfectly. Now, take the tea up to Charlie. All right. Go ahead. Up the stairs. Yes? Here's your tea, Cousin Charlie. Now it's done. You and Jake spend a sleepless night, don't you, Trina? Listening, wondering, waiting. And then in the morning... I don't want to go up there, Jake. I I just can't. All right, you don't have to. Let me have the suicide note. I'll take it up and put it on the lampstand. Do we have to call the police this morning? Of course, but there's nothing to worry about. We simply tell them I went upstairs to call him for breakfast and found him... Well, that way. Jake. Jake, are you sorry we've we've done it? Listen, Trina. I was thinking last night. There may be more than 10,000 in this for us. Charlie's a rich man, isn't he? I think so. You're his only living relative, aren't you? Yes. All right. He's almost certain to have mentioned you and his will. Do you realize what that means, Trina? We'll be rich. Rich. Oh, Jake, it must be wonderful to be rich. You bet. Trina, we're both alike. I think that's why I love you so much. And I love you, Jake. I always will. Good morning. Joy! Hi, what's the matter? Well, there's, there's nothing. She wasn't... Oh, I... You know, I must have fallen right to sleep last night. That, that cup of tea, I didn't get a chance to drink it. But thanks, anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, what are you staring at me for? Did I forget something? <laughs> well, what have you got for breakfast? Breakfast? Yes, breakfast, Trina. Oh. Eggs, eggs. Eggs, eggs, fine. How about dishing me up a platter? I, I'm kind of in a hurry, you know. I thought I'd go into town this morning, get me a pair of temporary glasses. I'll, I'll fix you something right away. Yeah. Oh, say, I meant to tell you, I used your phone for a long-distance call yesterday. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. I had to call my foreman, one of my ranches. We're going to enlarge. Yes, finally got an okay of some building material. Figured I'm going up to look it over day after tomorrow. You told the foreman you'd be there day after tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Well, come on. How about those eggs? Oh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Right away, Cousin Charlie. Well, Jake and you are lucky, Trina. It was an almost miraculous stroke of luck. If Charlie had drunk the tea after making that phone call to his ranch, you would have been doomed. A man planning suicide wouldn't be planning the enlargement of his ranch at the same time. The police would have checked with the foreman and immediately become suspicious. They would have questioned you. And from that, they wouldn't have found it difficult to piece it all together. Yes, you were lucky. But your problem isn't solved. That evening... Trina, did Charlie get back? He's in the front room, listening to the radio. Did he get his glasses? Yes. Good. That solves the problem. Oh, Jake. Hmm? Not again. There's only two days left, Trina. I know, Listen, but we... this is foolproof. We ask him to go into town for some candles for the anniversary cake. I loan him my car. Well, how does the that The skid help? chains are off, and the roads are slippery with snow. I've loosened a bolt in the master cylinder of the brakes. By the time he starts back from town, all of the hydraulic fluid will have leaked out. The brakes won't hold. Call Charlie. Oh, Jake. Call I... him. Here are the keys, Charlie Okay Oh, and Charlie Yeah? On your way back, take the highway along the river You can make better time Okay, I'll hurry Yes, be sure to hurry Charlie took the keys and started out the front door And as that door closed behind him Somehow you felt relieved, Trina Almost exhilarated Nothing further to worry about. Everything accomplished. And poor, dull Charlie was the key to that realization. You stood by the window, not bothering to look out, not wanting to. You listened for the door slam and for the motor to start. But you didn't hear either. 
Instead, you heard a voice calling. Cousin Charlie. Sounds like he's on the porch. Open the door. Cousin Charlie, what's the matter? I I slipped on the steps. I don't seem to be able to get up. Give me a hand, will you? Yeah, here. Be careful. Oh, oh, oh. Get him in the house, Charlie. Yeah, all right. Take it easy, Charlie. Come on. <laughs> it's my ankle. I, I'm afraid I've sprained it. <laughs> Yes, he sprained his ankle. So you called a doctor who came over and taped Cousin Charlie's leg. He advised Charlie to stay in bed and rest up, and he would pay him another visit in the morning. Jake is furious. The thing is getting to be an obsession with him. I don't care, Trina. I don't care what's gone wrong. We can't wait any longer. We can't. Jake. Jake, what's gotten into you? Why do you look that way? Why do I look what way? There's nothing wrong with me. It's just that this thing's getting maddening, that's all. We won't be able to do it, Jake. You can see that. It just wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be all right, and it's going to be. No. Don't you realize, Jake, there's something bigger than you or me? There's nothing bigger than you or me, not now. I planned this affair. I'll make it work. No. Yes, no, I say. No. Listen to me. You've kept up the insurance on the house, haven't you? You know I have. All right, this is the last time. This is the time we'll do it. There's plenty of kerosene in the basement. It'll work. It's got to. You don't need to... We'll burn this infernal house to the ground and Cousin Charlie with it. No, Jake. Shut up. We'll be in the garage looking over the car brakes. We won't notice the fire until too late. Charlie started it with a cigarette accidentally. He was smoking in bed. But he's crippled. He'll never be able to get down the stairs. Of course. That's the idea. You wouldn't do that. We can and we will. Trina, we've gone too far to stop now. Hello, Charlie. How do you feel? Oh, a little better, thanks. <laughs> Guess I'm sort of spoiling your anniversary, eh? Oh, no, of course you are, Cousin Charlie. You have our sympathy. Oh, no, there's no need to feel sorry for me. It's just a little spring. Say, Charlie, that money of yours, don't you think Trina and I'd better put it away for you? Oh, I don't know. Nobody's going to rob me, are they? Hmm? No, of course not. I just thought, well, we have a wall safe downstairs, and in as much as you're laid up... Well, come to think of it, it might not be a bad idea. Oh, there's my traveling kit over there. Take it down with you. Fine. Hey, Trina, what have you got in the can there? Oh, oh, it's kerosene. We were just going down to the furnace and thought we'd heat your room up a little for you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, oh, 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 dear. Oh, I've spilled it. I'll get a cloth and clean it up right away. Oh, now, don't you bother. It, it'll dry up. Well, if you're sure you don't mind. Oh, no, it's okay. Oh, say, I was able to pick up a pack of cigarettes, Charlie, in case you'd like a smoke. Well, thank you. But you'd better keep them. You see, I don't smoke. You don't? No. Oh, well, that's right. That's right. I forgot. Come on, Trina. We better go downstairs. What was it the poet said about the best laid plans, Jake? Seems that whatever you try, you're wrong. Perhaps Trina was right. It just wasn't meant to be. But you can't give it up now. But, Jake, regardless, why can't we tell the police it started with a cigarette? Don't be a fool. Don't you think they discover he didn't smoke? Well, we gotta find something besides a cigarette. What to... Oh, I'll get it. Hello. Speaking. Oh, hello, Evans. Yes. Yeah. They what? They're on the way over here now. Yes. Yes, I'm glad you called. Thanks. Bye. What is it, Jake? Jake, what's wrong? They discovered the shortage at the bank. They must have. That was Evans, my police reporter friend. He says the cops are on their way over here now. Evans said he thought I'd like to know. He's a nice guy. How? I thought the bank examiners weren't doing I don't know how. Trina, you said you loved me. I do, Jake. Heaven help me for it, but I do. We'll run away, you and I. But if we're caught... We will be if we stay here. We've got to leave, Trina. We got Charlie's 10,000. Maybe we'll be able to start it again somewhere else. Not everybody gets caught, Trina. If we play it smart and stick together, people will forget about the whole thing in a couple of years. But, Jake... Will you come with me, Trina? Yes, Jake, you know I'll come. <laughs> Are you afraid? No, not anymore. They're probably at the house by now. 
Jake, you have to drive so fast. They'll be looking for us pretty soon. But you're doing almost 70 in the road. <gasps> Jake! What is it? Jake! Good Lord, Jake! You forgot! The brakes! <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, here's some summertime arithmetic that adds up to better performance and longer life for today's aging cars. Did you know that for proper operation, water should circulate through the cooling system at the rate of 25 gallons per minute? However, as cars grow older, radiators clog up with rust and sludge. Water hoses rot, fan belts stretch and wear out. And that's why for safe, efficient summer operation... It's wise to have your entire cooling system checked now by your Signal gasoline dealer. To restore the efficiency of your radiator, your Signal dealer has a special rust and sludge dissolving flushing compound that can't harm the metal. He has radiator sealer to stop small leaks and rust preventive to protect radiator and motor from further corrosion. If you need a new water hose or fan belt, your Signal dealer has the finest heavy-duty quality, and he will install them while you wait. You see, your signal dealer is much more than a place to buy Signal's famous go-farther gasoline and fine lubricants. Wherever you see Signal's yellow and black circle sign, there you will also find complete conscientious signal service to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now, back to the whistler. Well, in their haste to get away with Cousin Charlie's $10,000, Jake and Trina forgot one important little thing, the brakes. Jake had drained the brake fluid in the attempt to murder Cousin Charlie. But now, speeding along the icy river road, it was too late. You can probably guess what happened. It was pretty messy. And back home, Cousin Charlie had a caller. Oh, oh, good evening, officer. Good evening. Come in. I, I'm i sorry I took so long to answer right, the door. All right, Mr. Crowley residence? Uh, yes, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, it is. But uh, Mr. Crowley doesn't seem to be home. I'm Charlie Barton, Mrs. Crowley's cousin. Good. You're the one I'm looking for anyway. Oh, what can I do for you? Well, the department got a call from out west somewhere, somebody trying to get a hold of you. Something about some property out there. Hmm? Didn't know where to reach you here in town, so they asked us to track you down. Uh, here's the name and address. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, excuse me, the telephone... Oh, sure, sure, go ahead. Thank you. Hello? Hmm? Yes, this is the Crowley resident. No, no, this is Charlie Barton. I'm Miss Crowley's cousin. They... What? What? Oh, 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 that, that, that's terrible. Yes, yes, uh, to, to identify the bodies, of course, I... I, I'll get someone to drive me down immediately. Uh, the what? Ten thousand dollars? Well, that's strange. Well, I was going to give them ten thousand dollars for an anniversary present. Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Lewis Reed, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. (laughs) 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.